<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stoner's edition of Ranking Shit. <laughs> Today we're going to be ranking David Cronenberg's films. Now listen, we don't have all of them here. For example, we don't have Fast Company or M. Butterfly. We haven't seen those films. There's one film here that we haven't seen that we'll get to later on. But overall, we've seen the vast, vast majority. And we figured, fuck it. Why don't we rank them here today? So let's get on with it. Let me go ahead and show you our ranking board here. So we have uh, the S category, A category, B, C, D, all the way down to F. And we have the various Cronenberg films here. Let me just double check that I'm Yeah, they're all good. All right. So let's go ahead and let's just <laughs> dive straight in. Um, let's go with like a more mid one. So Spider. Uh, I don't remember this You one. don't remember this one. I do. I enjoyed this one, but it wasn't <coughs> like amazing. So basically <coughs> in the film, there's a guy who seems to be kind of losing his shit. And he finds these spider webs in his room and they're threads that lead to like different oh, things and then, like, yeah now i remember the and then his what his he like thought that his dad's like uh killed his mom because of like some lover or something like that yeah. but it turns out he accidentally killed his mom and created oh, this delusion alert. bro we're here ranking all of the cronenberg films yeah sorry we'll put in a thing at the beginning spoiler alert but yes there's gonna be spoilers for every single film here anyway <laughs> Uh, except for the ones that we don't know, obviously. Um, but so this one, I'm going to say, if you don't remember it, I'll just take the... I remember the... it being pre really interesting, and then the ending, it was pretty shocking. So, yeah. honestly, if I was to rank it, I'd probably rank it up in the B. A B? Okay, I'm good with the B as well, because I enjoyed this film quite a bit. And if you do, I just figured you did, I thought you didn't remember it. No, because so now then, yeah. I kind of remember, like, the Roman. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and I, I do remember, yeah, the end was really good. So we've got our first B here. It's one of the only Cronenberg movies that we only see once. Yeah, we've watched quite a few of these twice. Like, especially Dead Ringers. Or I know you really watched this several times. Like, History of Violence stuck with me. Yeah, like, I want to go back and rewatch some of these. But actually, Eastern we'll... Promises stuck Eastern with Promises Eastern Promises is, yeah. We, we, I'm trying to start with the Viggo one. Mortensen's a hell of an actor. No, that's true. Let's go with The Fly. This is one of his more mainstream films. Yeah. It's one of the more popular ones. However, it's like... It's, it's got it's, uh, the... Uh, uh, who is... Uh, David... Uh, or no. No, it's uh, Jeff Goldblum Jeff and Goldblum, Gina Davis. Yeah, or Gene yeah. did something like that. And so basically this film, I really love this film. This was probably this is definitely the first Cronenberg film I ever had seen. Uh and for me though because the story isn't that in depth. It it's just, just has a really good effects. It's crazy story like as you see his trans uh transformation from a scientist to a yeah. fly and then just like uh like this I think it was made in the 80s. It was made in the 80s. It was like 86. It and then like, said, Gene... like everything used is so practical. Yeah, it was. Really and was Gina Davis great. like had this love for the guy and like even kind of kept yeah, it the, almost. Uh, till she he was, was the mom in uh, Stuart Little. Yeah, I know. She was yeah. attractive, honestly. So, anyway. Yeah, but so she always reminded me of Kirstie Alley. Don't do that to her. <laughs> Hey, I just Isn't saying. Kirstie Alley dead now? Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. When I was growing Listen, up. Uh, I think The Fly is either an A or between an A and a B. A. Okay, cool. It's definitely uh, one of his best ones. Yeah, for sure. It's fantastic. And it's one of his more mainstream. Okay. <coughs> now let's go with Shivers. Shivers is a little lower for me, but it was interesting. So this is... Do you remember this film? No, not really. So this is the one where he's in the apartment complex, and there's, like, a thing that, like, gets into his body, and he becomes, like, a, a zombie almost. And then there's, like, a whole zombie outbreak, and they end up, like, chasing this one man, like, through the pool of the complex. It's, like, it, it wasn't a very deep story, but it was more showing, like, the practical capabilities of Cronenberg, and this was before Scanners. Okay. This was the movie right before Scanners. So this one, for me, is going to be a C. Because it's pretty, it was like, okay, but it had some good practical effects, but it was nothing fantastic. And for Cronenberg, it was definitely a little more mid. Yeah, I know I watched it, I just don't remember, so I would say <laughs> that's it's a fair. C or a L. So. Okay, that's fair. So we'll just toss it at a C. <coughs> and who knows, at the end, maybe if we <coughs> if we want to move them around a little, we can do that. Now, let's just be straight up here. This one we have not seen. So this here is Rabid. Apparently, it follows a woman who gets, like, a parasite in under her armpit. And it, like, attacks people, and then they... It's similar to Shivers. So I kind of never... When we watched Shivers and it was more mid, I was like, eh, it doesn't sound, like, all that great. So we're not going to rank it, though. 
because it could be amazing. I have no idea. So we'll leave this up here, and later on, we'll watch M. Butterfly. We'll watch Fast Company. We'll watch that movie so we can say we've seen every single Cronenberg film that's available, and we'll add them to the list. But for now, this one's going to have to stay up in the corner. Uh, so then let's, let's come over to Scanners. So I don't know why this is opaque, but it is what it is. So Scanners, I really liked. I think because uh, yeah, know, I really like scanners. The main thing was they had that like really the, good head explosion scene. Yeah, the villain guy was in the movie. I really like. Actually, yeah, he's been in like I think RoboCop. I think he's been in. Uh, I think he was in uh, the was it Total Recall with I. I, I haven't don't... seen the original. Yeah, I haven't seen the. I, I'm sure I he is. I know that guy's done a lot of villain. stuff. Yeah, he was a main villain back in like the 80s and 90s. Yeah, sure. and then also the guy who was uh, the the main like good guy was the guy from the Brood, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, this was a good film. I would actually yeah, I'd say this is either I'd an say A. B. Okay, a I'd say this is a, B. no. You know yeah. what? I'd say let's put this one because we can do some in betweens. Let's put this one in between because for me this is an A because it's a really fun movie. I love the explosion scene, but I can understand especially compared to other stuff that we're gonna get to. It's not as good. Um, now we'll go ahead and throw out Crimes of the Future. Now listen, I don't remember much of this movie. I, I was waking hopped up, up at least seven, eight times in the theater when I was uh, while I was sleeping. Well, I know I and was hopped just up on Xanax. Watching as more and more people left the theater. No, that was crazy. I do remember there being that one lady left at the yeah, end of the film. Yeah, the one film. lady. There was only one. And we, I wanted. Left. I also wanted to dap her up, be like, "You made it, good job." <laughs> but I, I, I don't remember the movie. I was way too high. I'm going to be straight up. I was high <coughs> on a Japanese benzo called Romazophone. So I can't really tell you how it was. You don't like it, though. So I'm going to let you rank it for now. Like Kristen Stewart. So, okay. Now, okay. <laughs> so now I have to give it one st- score higher because you have a bias against Kristen Stewart. <laughs> That's stupid. So if it was going to be an F, it's now an E. So what was There's it going to be? There's some actresses that can't act. Dude. Her, I do remember her character was supposed to be blank. That was well, the yeah, point. that so then I will work for. Her. I just, yeah, of course, like John Cena, right? I just was a boring film. I remember. I don't remember the film. I just so kept, I that's mean, okay. If it was good, it would have kept me awake. And no, it, I, we hadn't slept for two days prior to that. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I don't think that's about, but if you dislike yeah. it, I believe you. We can always come I'm back to it's it. A D at okay, best. we'll put it. I'll put it between a D and an E. And then we'll come back yeah, to we'll it. Yeah, come back and we'll, we'll come it back. F. It might be an F. It really might be. Probably is. Okay, so let me just... I'm going to make it a little smaller here. Yeah, and I don't know why Vigo Mortensen's in it. Uh, yeah, Vigo felt weird here. Vigo had that weird accent that he did. He was like, yeah, Timmy, Timmy. Yeah. I remember that. It was very weird. Yeah, 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 exactly. He did that. Okay, now we're going to go to a controversial... No, you know what? We'll do that <coughs> afterwards, actually. Let's do History of Violence. History of Violence Definitely was a, good a very good film. I would put it probably at an A. a. Yeah. yeah, I would put it at an A. Yeah, this was a, I'm close to an S on that one. It's clo- I, I agree. I Except think the thing that keeps it from I... being an S is it is a super simple well, story. Well, I, th- I have to compare it to Eastern Promises. And Eastern oh, and Promises Eastern Promises is an S. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eastern so, Promises is an S. So History get there. of Violence though, was a really solid A for sure. Yeah, and History of Violence followed Viggo Mortensen's character who had like a history of violence that came back to fuck him over. He used to be like a mafia member or something. And he wanted to protect his family and all that. Very good film. Viggo Mortensen played it perfectly. And overall, the only thing I complain about is that the story was a little simple and a little underwhelming at times. But it kept me super engaged. So definitely, I'll put that at an A for now. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll do The Brood first. So The Brood, do you remember much of? Yeah, the children. Yeah, it had like oh, the, uh, like the mom uh, was giving like aliens. Yeah, there was like an alien yeah. uh, who infected this one woman that was dating that oh, guy. The top is kind of. Uh, yeah, I know, but this I, it oh. wasn't perfect earlier. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I can't. It's not gonna work. Anyway, the point of the matter is, um, yeah, there was that woman who got like infested with aliens and then had like eight alien babies or something like that. Yeah, the f- special effects were fantastic and on par with the thing. However, the movie itself was pretty mid. I don't remember yeah, it being that great. No, I don't. I don't. I didn't. I remember when I saw it, I was like, I didn't really care for it as much. I can't remember. We saw some other movie with children. Oh, we saw the 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 uh, fucking Village of the Damned, and that one was yeah. better. Where you have the kids that are yeah, aliens. That one was it was better. a better movie. So then I, I was like, so I actually think it's a D. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'll put that at a D. Because, yeah, The Brood was very underwhelming. And also, it didn't use its actors to its full capability. Because the guy from Scanners was in it. But uh, he wasn't, like, he just didn't 
have much depth to his character. No, it's just I think there's movies where Cronenberg tries things, yeah, and then he comes out with his full idea on the next film. Yeah, and then it gets better. Absolutely, I yeah. agree. Um, okay, so then let's see. Now we're getting down to the bangers. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's just do Crash. Fuck it. All right, so Crash is super controversial, but uh, this film's an S for me. I'm just going to be honest. It might be an A for you. F. It, uh, no, that's <laughs> fucking not true at all. It's hard to watch, but it's hard to watch in a way that says something unlike what I remember Crimes of the Future. Crimes of the Future felt like it was a little more disgusting to be disgusting, yeah. while Crash feels like it actually has something to say about how humans will sexualize anything around them. Mm -hmm. And so, like, for me, Crash, while it was hard and disturbing to watch, it was an interesting case study in degeneracy, especially because then, like, they throw in there, like, the gay sex. There's just all sorts of shit yeah, with sex. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I, honestly, it's probably an A. So. Okay, so I'll put it in between. I then. just, it's, yeah, it's a film that's I'll put hard it in to between. watch. I will not watch it again. Oh, I will. I will have to watch it again at some point. I'll have to watch pretty much all of these again at some point. But, uh, okay, so then we can go over to the Dead Zone. Dead Zone was really good. Uh, on a second watch, the it ice, wasn't as it fun. gone bright. Okay, you gotta <laughs> listen. Just because there's one line in there that's hilarious <laughs> doesn't mean you gotta. Christopher repeat Walken it. is at the top of his class in uh, this movie. It's absolutely phenomenal. This is actually for me. Dead Zone is an S. I love the movie. Okay. I really do. So for it's me, one of my favorite ones from Cronenberg. Okay, I love Dead Zone. It was really good for me. It's an A. It doesn't quite reach the height, so we'll put it in between like Crash. So it, for me, it doesn't quite reach the heights of something like Eastern Promises. But it's a really good movie, and it ultimately gives Christopher Walken a real time to shine. And he, now there is it's that really disturbing that kid. It's just makes it funny. Yeah. While it's there, it also but it also it has a serious aspect to it. Yeah. yeah like there's, but then you have that creepy kid who has a really deep voice for no reason. Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, and he's basically orgasming oh, on the roller coaster. Yeah. Well, also remember he like tells that woman like your your child is dying, and then yeah. he like oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, everything. like she's in the yeah, house. Yeah, the house burning, going, yeah. and then he like turns over and he's like, "Run, child, run!" Yeah, listen, that was no, I do like that movie. So, but again, for me, it's an A, and since it's an in, in it also movie, is, it uh, an also had a great South Park episode linked to it. So. Oh, that's true. No, I swear to God, I never realized that until we watched it, and then I was like, "Holy shit, I see where this comes chicken, that's your chicken, that's <laughs> good, that's good." They just keep going after the wrong person. But yeah, that yeah, yeah. There's a creepy guy just standing off to the side. That very obvious. Yeah, that that's murdered. basically supposed to be like Buffalo Bob from uh, Silence of the Lambs. Fat Buffalo Bill or Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. Bill. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll move on to, and I'll I'll grab it here in a second. But we can do existence. <coughs> I like this movie a lot. I like Existence a good bit. Jude uh, Law is incredible. Go ahead and break it down for the people real quick. Like so basically, uh, Existence is uh, essentially a uh, virtual reality uh, game. And they put you inside this game and it is meant to feel real. Like you're meant to feel like you're actually inside of it. And the whole thing breaks down when basically uh, there's people uh, on hunting down Jude Law's character and uh, then they hunting down the, the girl's character. <laughs> yeah, the girl's character. <laughs> and Julia's help. And the ending is it's crazy because you don't know whether they're in the fucking game or whether they're not in the game. So it keeps you interested throughout. Yeah, absolutely. and even the ending still leaves you on a cliffhanger. Like I don't know if this shit's real or not. Yeah, because they have it where they go into this game and this game is personalized for them and their yep. personalities. And so the game somehow knew that, like on the other end of it, in the real world, the real world. Jude Law's character and the woman, I can't remember her name, were, <laughs> like, dating, and then they were, like, uh, like terrorists, I guess, against people that yeah, were creating these terrorists. games. Yeah, against people that were creating these games, because they knew that, like, hey, people aren't going to be able to tell what's real versus what's fake, and that comes to the deep fake and AI, like, artificial shit that we have these days, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Existence was great. Um, I don't know. Is it an... <laughs> is it I would say at least an A. I, I would, an a. I'm close to an S. <laughs> let's put it in between then. Let's, let's send another Because it's up there with Dead Zone. I think it's right there <laughs> next to Dead Zone. I agree. No, I think having it in the in-between works here. Okay, let's go to some of the <coughs> more dog shit. Dog shit. Yeah, dog shit. Now, this one we're going to fight on, but that's Four. okay. We'll get there. <laughs> Chill! Okay. Cosmopolis was terrible. One of the worst films. It followed a... 
like billionaire stockbroker who was going to get a haircut and he goes through the city and there's a bunch of like terrorists that throw dead rats at people for no fucking reason and the whole film is just him fucking people in a limo trying to get his wife to love him as his whole life crumbles in front of him and i went through and i read what the actual ending was because i was curious okay basically he gets a like colonoscopy halfway through in the limo in the limo and it says like oh you have a like I don't know, slanted fucking uh, whatever it's called. I can't remember the term for it. Okay. But uh, prostate. You have a slanted prostate or something like that. Okay. And that means that you have cancer probably. Okay. And so the ending is like this guy who like shorted the stock of his company expecting a crash in the market. And it was like, it was like, hey, you should have like saw what your body was trying to tell you. The slant meant like your stocks were gonna go downwards so you should have started shorting the market and it was this weird capitalist so thing listen to your prostate yes <laughs> no that's the message and this film was dog shit everybody in it did yeah, fucking it's, terrible it's an F. i don't know why anybody would ever participate or and watch it's this nothing, film uh, we love robert, no, robert pattinson. pattinson's one of the best fucking actors here. lighthouse is one of my favorite movies i've ever seen in my entire anything, life this, this is dog shit him up uh, as bruce wayne and what he becomes as bruce facts wayne. no he was great as the yeah, batman very brooding, he was great love very it. yeah yeah that's true very like blatant, disengaged like, yeah exactly like he's just not there you know what i mean so let me just make it so a yeah smaller. watch batman <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a better uh, version yeah because he's also a billionaire you know what i mean exactly. so fuck it okay so, now we'll take, what do we got? Naked, uh, lunch. naked Lunch. We can do Naked Lunch, yeah. I like Naked, naked Lunch. Naked Lunch was good. It was a little longer than it needed to be. Yeah, it really could have cut 20 minutes. Yeah, so it follows a guy who, like, has a whore of a wife who's addicted to various drugs, and he's a bug pest destroyer dude, and he gets addicted to eating bug spray as, like, a hallucinogen. Yeah. And then he somehow gets transported to another... His typewriter talks to him. Yeah, his typewriter talks to him, and he says, like, hey, you need to go on this mission. And he goes to, like, a Middle Eastern country. Yeah. And then there's, like, he, like, fucks this guy's... Oh, he fucks Bilbo's wife, remember? Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. Bilbo was in there. So anyway, it was a weird movie. And it's I very think the guy strange. who... The main guy in this movie, I'm pretty sure, is a uh, Robocop. Oh, is he? Okay, that I'm makes sense. I'm pretty sure, yeah. But, uh, um, the, it, the, so it was weird weird sexual like, things with the typewriter and... yeah there was the weird sex stuff with the typewriter i think the problem was at its worst it just didn't have a point at some points right it felt just kind of random at some points like the ending how like there's like a reveal that like somebody i can't remember who it was his boss yeah or something. peter weller that is robocop peter so, Weller's Ro yeah. okay but yeah at the end i remember they reveal like the boss was putting some drugs and something <clears throat> i can't remember exactly the full details but it just kind of lost its plot yeah and it was a little heady for no reason i felt like times. it didn't know how to end itself no it really didn't but i like the idea and also god damn it i like the idea and oh wait i can just lock this motherfucker Okay, now I can't touch it on accident. All right, anyway, back to the point. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think that Naked Lunch was definitely, like, it was... Because I like the heady aspects of it. I like the uh, surrealist style. I can't put it, uh, yeah. So but I, it's not at... It's, like, at a BFS. <clears throat> I would say, yeah, a BFS, probably, probably a C. C. Yeah. Let's go with the C. I think that's... <clears throat> That's that's very realistic. Okay. Now shivers though, I feel like sh I don't like shivers more than naked lunch though. I think I like them equally, but if you think that it's a if you yeah if you don't want if you think shivers but should maybe be lower sh yeah I'll have I to I can do like half of it. I'll have to rewatch for shivers. now. What I'll we'll do? We'll put it on C. We'll both of them on C. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sounds sense. good. Let's see. And then brood was at a D. Okay. Uh, now we have just some bangers left pretty much, except the one I didn't know. Except, A Dangerous Method. I like this movie. I think it was really interesting to learn more about the beef between Carl Jung and Freud. And basically it follows, like, Jung and his process of figuring out, like, 
talk therapy as well as like how you can talk through older like things that happen in your life to kind of let out various emotional aspects of things and it makes you overall feel better and then he gets like in sexually involved with his patients which freud totally did not like says hey don't you can't do that that's unethical and then it's about that battle back and forth of that idea of how close can you actually yeah, get to your patient uh, you and your ethics don't fuck your patients okay it's an interesting movie you didn't <laughs> like it that's fine would you put it at an e and f or a d what are we doing well i would say it's a d because i okay, don't like it fine. i definitely like naked lunch more than that so i would put it at a b but i will let you have yeah. like d and a half i'm gonna put it right between d and c but i want everybody to know that I would put it at probably a B. So I'm just saying that. But okay, we'll put it like halfway right here. Let me make it smaller. Okay. Now we're left with just the, the un, unrequited bangers for the most part. So we have Video Drum, Dead Ringers, uh, and then Eastern Promises. So Eastern Promises is an S. Yeah, it's an S. Eastern Promises is an amazing film. It's got I, one of the craziest fight scenes bro i i'm telling you so it follows vigo mortensen as a mafia member for the russian mafia and there is a girl who is assaulted and naomi watt i believe or watts plays a character who's like a nurse and finds this girl and delves into the world of the mafia and like the prostitutes and it has a lot of crazy twists and turns and there is this amazing fight scene between vigo mortensen and these two big russian dudes that are uh, in a bathhouse and vigo mortensen is buck naked dick flopping about full-on fight scene looking like he's fighting for his life looks real as fuck yeah like one of the uh, craziest fight scenes i would say like uh the raid type of real absolutely yeah like equivalent to the raid and so you can hear the punches and feel (laughs) yeah and it feels so fucking real because it's like what the fuck you don't even realize he's naked half the time because you're so invested in the fight scene itself yeah so uh, obvious s so then we'll have uh dead ringers dead ringers for me is also an s yeah, I would say Dead Ringers. On this. Okay, great. So Dead Ringers follows two brothers that are gynecologists, and basically Jeremy Irons. I seen Jeremy that Irons is always <laughs> in, yeah, he's so good. That's why like in Butterfly must be at least decent because I've never seen a bad Jeremy Irons film. Yeah, unless we're talking about that one TV show that he wasn't really a part of. He just did the the voiceover for. Yeah. Anyway, that's not the really tavern. important. Don't say its <laughs> name. You're giving it free clout on our platform? It's a, sh- it's a stupid That's, show. Yeah, I know. I should make a it video about killed, it. You forced me to it watch it. It should have killed uh, Keegan Michael Key's career. It probably should have, yes. It probably should have. Mike Myers' career should already be dead. It, that's facts. Yeah, that's facts. But anyway. Okay, so anyway, back to the point here. Uh, yeah, basically one twin is like n- very much more emotional than the other and he becomes emotionally involved with this one woman and previously they would like share women and all this other crazy shit and so as one starts to slip into insanity the other one also follows him <coughs> great film ending is fucking insane and overall is based on like not a tr- not like it's obviously not a true story but like there's aspects of it and that are based on real shit they were both gynecologists. gynecologists. And he, like, yeah, he had that scene where he and they're that all, crazy shit. Like, it's all red. Like they're, Very they're... red. No, I know. It's very much got the demonic feel to it and stuff like that. Like, I'm sure Catholics and Christians were mad about it at the time. Oh, yeah. They're always pissed about that. Absolutely. And then we have Videodrome, which is also an and S, S for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, easy S. Videodrome follows James Woods as he goes Ooh, piece into... of candy guy. What? No! <laughs> Stop it! He's not part of Family Guy. He was. No, he was. I, he was on a lot of episodes. Guy. I don't remember this, okay? You need to stop reminding James me. James Woods was a reoccurring character. No, he wasn't. <laughs> yes, he, he was. was not. In my world, he was not. <coughs> okay? So overall, Video Drum, yeah, follows him as he slips into insanity after finding this, like, pornographic imagery that apparently enslaves people to it and drives people insane. It's a really good movie, really crazy. A lot of shit it predicted as well. Like, it has a whole thing where it's like, oh, in the future, people will have, like, these false names to refer to each yeah, other the as and all that shit. Yeah, creepy old guy that comes on and talks about 
yeah again, almost narrates somewhere. yeah it narrates it at certain points fantastic absolutely uh, the uh robotics uh, that were used were absolutely incredible like yeah no i know the, the special makeup, effects were fantastic stuff, yeah. like everything to so do with practical. it was amazing like disney. yeah disney never does it real anymore so there you go guys that's where we have it our s tier includes uh eastern promises uh, Dead Ringers, Videodrome, our A is The Fly, A and a half, like in between B and A, is going to be uh, Scanners, as well as we have Eastern Promises at an A. In between A and S, we got Crash, Dead Zone, and Existence. At B, we have Spider, only one on B. Uh, at C, we have Shivers and Naked Lunch. That might change in the future. D, we have The Brood. And then in between C and a D, we have uh, uh, fucking A Dangerous Method. In between D and E, we have Crimes of the Future. And at an absolute F by itself is Cosmopolis. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, the, alone, he looks alone on the F section there. <laughs> he should be. He should be left to his own devices there. So what do you guys think? Is there anything that you disagree with us on here? Is there anything that you would change about this uh, scoreboard here? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we will, like I said, at some point, go watch M. Butterfly and all that other shit. And, and a cra uh, what was it? Fast Company. Yeah, we'll watch Fast Company as well. And we'll come back and we'll add those as well as Rabid. Uh, and we'll see where they land. My guess is they're probably going to be lower on the scoreboard. Yeah, I'd uh, say I'm, I'm, I'm guessing in the middle or below. Yeah, I'm guessing nothing is going to hit the quite – like nothing is going to hit the same as some of those top films there. So anyway, guys, uh, let us know again in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That will pop up during the outro. And you can follow us on any of our other socials down in the description below. And we'll see you all in the next video. They sound of my head to the depths of the universe. It's a spell or a chance just to open up a newer curse.